Hey guys, Adrian here from the Digital Dojos. Today we're going to be taking a look in full review of the iPhone 5, Apple's latest iPhone in the lineup. I've had mine for a while now and I want to talk about my thoughts regarding the hardware, software, my overall opinion on the iPhone 5, how it stacks up in the market and against the predecessor, the, you know, the previous iPhone 4S and 4, etc. So here you can see my iPhone 5. It is wrapped in an iCarbon skin. I do have the black slate model. It's a 32 gig uh, iPhone 5, but it is right now in its iPhone or iCarbon skin to help protect it. It has that wood finish. Um, so you can see it's just a sticker adhesive. Anyways, the new iPhone 5 it is newly designed in that it is now at 7.6 millimeters of depth, 112 in terms of grams of uh, weight. And you can just obviously see from here compared to the iPhone 4S and many other phones, this is much more thinner, much more lighter, and it's definitely something a product you need to hold in your hand. Just taking a look at it here, you can see that thinness and you know the bigger 4 inch screen compared to that of the 4S. Though they do maintain their battery life, they pack it with a new A6 processor and it's still getting you know great battery life and faster speeds even though despite it being thinner and lighter. Of course it's packed with that new lightning connector switch on the hardware end so it has that new lightning connector in terms of charging which a lot of people are griped about but it is something they need to do in terms of engineering. Another engineering feat they added was the new LTE radio, or you know, antenna I should say, allowing for LTE connection, cellular connection. You can see here on LTE in a full bar area, I got around 30 megs uh, down and 11 megs up. And in my own Wi-Fi area, I have 21 megs and 13 megs down, uh, 21 megs down, 31, 13 megs up. You can see in a full LTE area, I was getting faster connection than I actually was on my Wi-Fi. Of course, the iOS 6 is packed on this iPhone 5, that it's a software. You can see new things in iOS 6 like the App Store, which I'm not a huge fan of. Of course, there are new Apple Maps, which you've heard a lot of gripe about this uh, since moving from Google Maps. Uh, and people not really liking the terms of what the direction it gives. Uh, you know, they're still building upon this and it's still something very, very new to that operating system. And the camera. The camera had some improvements, both hardware and software-wise. The software app on iOS 6 is probably my favorite thing if, of iOS 6. It supports new stuff like panoramic mode. You can take stills while shooting video. And uh, again, that panorama mode is something that a lot of people are a huge fan of in terms of you know taking sweep panorama pictures. Uh, the new iPhone 5 also has a new camera lens, the new sapphire crystal lens on the back, uh, featuring you know better contrast. I've, I've noticed some pictures in terms of uh, you know getting a higher uh, color contrast and all that and just better low light pictures with that new lens. All right, what else do you get on the new iPhone 5 percentage wise? Well, or battery wise, I should say. You get about, you know, on LTE, I get it on five to six, or I should say, sorry, five to six hours when I'm doing heavy usage. You can see here on this charge, I'm at 29% since four hours from my last charge. But again, this was due to heavy usage. I was actually using this uh, to shoot video, uh, uh, a lot of video, I should say, the night previous to this. So it is uh, something very, very new. Uh, and uh, does take up a toll on your battery life. If you're not using it, I got around eight to I just say eight to uh, nine hours, just average use. If you're just using your phone, you know, on standby a lot as a usual phone, web browsing here and there, you definitely get that seven to s seven to eight hours, uh, even more of usage if using it. You know, again, just average use. Power using on LTE, I got about six, you know, five to six, pushing that six hour limit here. Also, to touch a little bit on the whole aspect of both hardware and software, the iPhone 4, 5 has that new, you know, 4-inch retina display. You can see here when apps do not support that in terms of, uh, res you know, resolution updated for the iPhone 5, you can see the difference in the apps here. You kind of get those black borders. So it is a little bit better in terms of having the black iPhone so you don't see those bars as much uh, on apps. It doesn't bother you much. It blends in. Also, of course, you get that new extra row of icons, which some people will be, you know, very, very happy about in terms of, you know, just having more on your home screen. All right, so let's go on to pros. Pros, obviously the phone is now lighter, it's thinner, it's faster. That new A6 chip is definitely, you know, improved performance. Has that improved camera with the new lenses and just the software, it, it runs great in terms of FaceTime camera and rear view camera and just, you know, whether it's vlogging or just taking photos, it's a nice camera to have in your pocket. And of course, that new design, it's sleek, it's simple, it's not, you know, in, totally innovative more than just uh, revolutionary, it's not, you know, evolutionary much more than it's revolutionary. It's taking that same design, building on it. It just looks like that much more sleeker. Let's talk about cons. On the flip side, iOS 6 has some issues. There's still those maps issues. They have the four inch display that they don't really do a lot with in terms of updates and, and stuff like that. It, you know, it's still native iOS. There is still some issues with iOS. It's 
And if you if you may be getting bored with iOS, it's nice that they added the extra icons. They have a whole bunch of cool features in iOS 6, but I think that's the iPhone 5's biggest kind of threshold or you know the thing that's holding it back is that there's some issues with iOS 6 revolving around maps. Uh, there's still not a lot of stuff that really kind of stuck out to me that they could have used with that four inch display, you know, whether it's updates, push notifications, stuff like that. All right, guys, so let's, you know, we, we looked at the, the pros and cons. So let's go over just, you know, my initial thoughts, overview, uh, the iPhone 5. So here it is in its iCarbon case. This is the black against slate model in 32 gigs. They offer them now in uh, 16, 32, 64. And my old 4S, my 4S still works here. It's dead right now, but um, it's still an operating phone. They, they're on separate numbers. So let's talk about upgrading, whether or not you need to shell out the extra cash for this, you know, whether or not it's really worth it. And I did decide to hold off my review as I could, so I can spend time with this, you know, really get to use it out there uh, on the go as a power user, etc. As a rating standpoint, I'm going to give the iPhone 5 a 7 out of 10 total. I know it's usually, I think I scored my 4S just a little bit higher. But on the basis of, as a power user, if you're a power user, this is, this, you know, this is one of the best smartphones out there, uh, bar none. Um, just because of that LTE. If you're in an LTE area, this is definitely something worth picking up. Because again, that LTE, uh, you know, then we have new phones and competitors out there like the Nexus 4, etc., etc. Comparing it to those phones, Android is doing great things right now. But one thing the Nexus 4 that's lacking if you're in an LTE area, LTE is really, really awesome. You saw the speeds, you can get like 30 megs down etc etc on the go and it's really really convenient again if you're a power user if you're downloading a lot if you're streaming a lot of content I love to listen to podcasts I love to watch video podcasts and all that uh, so when I'm in my car when I'm at school when I'm on you know when work on the go or whatever it may be LTE comes in handy especially because there's a lot of coverage recently here in Japan in my area softbank started opening that up the bigger screen you know we, we, do talk, we looked a little bit about this the bigger screen compared to the 4s is it that much different no I mean I mentioned this in the cons it's nice. It's convenient. It really is. It's it's nicer when you're watching videos and stuff like that that supports that kind of aspect ratio, that stretched out screen. But Apple has this typical thing where they do something and they usually have a reason as to why they do it. You know, they, they threw in a front-facing camera for FaceTime and, you know, stuff like that. They usually tend to explain hardware changes. But this, they kind of just said, you know, we smacked a new screen on it and it, it's, it's, that's kind of it. They didn't really do much with that space. I hope to see updates software-wise where they, they kind of handle better stuff. I can't wait for jailbreaking to become available because right now they're not taking advantage of that extra space as I showed you when text messages come in, stuff like that. It doesn't kind of push down the screen. It does this weird thing. and uh, I'm not really satisfied with what they took. The I mean, yes, they did the icons, but that's about it. Uh, watching video, stuff like that, yeah, it, it's, it's great. But again, um, the camera, if you're looking for a camera and nowadays a lot of people look for this in a smartphone because this is the number one camera you tend to carry around since it's always in your pocket or whatever it may be this is a really decent camera and in the smartphone market right now if you're looking at comparisons this is one of the best it may not have you know better quality than look uh, you know the nokia lumia 920 etc in certain scenarios but right now this has one of the best software easy to use easy to take pictures with and the fact that you know that this has a, a new lens necessarily, this is there's a new sapphire crystal lens on this iPhone 5, uh, and low light shots. Uh, a lot of comparisons have been done. This is still one of the best for low light type of shots. Contrast has been improved a bit with that new lens uh, and stuff like that. So you'll definitely see the colors pop and all that. And of course, on that new uh, four inch screen, it's it just you know looks that much nicer on the Retina display. And of course, the Retina display you can't forget that that's still available on the 4s, but. It is one of the nice looking screens out there in the market. Again, that Retina lineup is a very, very nice for text. If you read books or anything like that, if you read a lot of text on your phone, I like to read a lot of articles, this comes in handy. But again, 4S still offers that. The 4 still offers that. So, you know, if you, if you don't really need that bigger screen or that new camera, then uh, definitely not something to upgrade for. Design-wise, it is lighter. It is, it's, it's, it's extremely light in the fact that this is a good phone and a lot of people are saying this feels cheap because it's so light or it doesn't feel as hefty as this. But the way I think of it is that if this is lighter, um, and people talk bring gravity into the equation, you know, if it's heavier and it falls faster and all that. Um, but protection-wise, so there's a couple things here. Uh, as a guy who repairs uh, iPhones and stuff like that, yeah, you are less likely when you drop this to have to worry about this whole glass back. I actually cracked my glass back on this a couple times. Um, with this aluminum back, back, it does tend to scratch up a lot and get scuffed. Uh, I didn't have that issue, but a lot of people have had that issue. And you do still have that glass at the top and bottom, so those are still prone to breaking. It is a little bit harder to 
uh, repair in terms of this whole back plate is now has to be replaced if you get this dented, scuffed, or whatever it may be, and you want to get that repaired. On the other hand, the past iPhones have had a little bit issues in terms of repairing the screen. For people who repair that, it's kind of a tedious process. For the iPhone 5, it's much more easier to repair the screen, much more quicker, and can be done faster than it could have been done on the 4S. And this is just stuff I'm kind of bringing in for everyday scenario as common consumers do tend to drop their phone, break it, whatever it may be. Um, and in the end of it, the design, it really does feel nice in the hand, it feels nice to hold, it feels nice to take along, put in your pocket. It's that much lighter. It feels like the forest stripped out without the battery and all that, and you still have that same great battery life in here. You still have that same performance, that processor, you definitely see the speed performance in games and graphic intensive applications and all that. So it's definitely faster. So whether it's worth the upgrade or not, if you're in the forest, your contract's running up, yeah, definitely. If you're, if you're... You know, looking for a new phone, this is still a great, decent phone. And if you're in that iPhone, iOS community, uh, it's still going to do you, serve you well. If you are, you know, there's still some great and Android options. There's even some good Windows options. But again, if you're in that ecosystem of Apple and the iPhone, then this is still, you know, an awesome device for you. And the Lightning support will be coming out more and more as the holiday season rolls out and new accessories come out. Um, if you are still on the 4 or 4S and your contract isn't expiring, you still have a year or so to go and you don't know if you want to pay the extra fees, you don't necessarily have to, yeah. If you, if you want that LT, if you really want to experience connectivity at its best, at its fastest, download and upload speeds, then yeah, go ahead and upgrade to the iPhone 5. But again, like I said, there's a lot of other LTE phones out there, but this is still an awesome phone and still one of my main drivers in my main phone as of right now. So this has been the review, guys, on the iPhone 5. Please like the video, uh, comment, rate, and subscribe if you haven't, and of course, share the video out there with your friends, etc. Hope this helps somebody out there. Don't forget to check out our website at digitaldojos.com for a lot more content revolving around technology reviews, tutorials, and news. Thanks for watching.